Hello, and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe. I am your host, Shenandoah Briscoe, and today we will be covering Leviticus 21 through 22 and Matthew 28. Father, I just ask for purity of voice and clarity of voice speech recognition so that the reading of your word will be a blessing to you and to those who have tuned in. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. Rules for Priests, Leviticus 21. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the priests, the sons of Aaron, and say to them, A priest must not make himself ceremonially unclean for his people who die, except for a close relative, such as his mother or father, his son or daughter, his brother, or an unmarried sister who is dependent on him since she has no husband. For her he may make himself unclean. He must not make himself unclean for people related to him by marriage, and so defile himself. Priests must not shave their heads, or shave off the edges of their beards, or cut their bodies. They must be holy to their God, and must not profane the name of their God because they present the food offerings to the Lord, the food of the, their God. They are to be holy. They must not marry women defiled by prostitution or divorced from their husbands, because priests are holy to their God. Regard them as holy, because they offer up the food of your God. Consider them holy, because in the Lord, because I, the Lord, am holy. I who make you holy. If a priest's daughter defiles herself by becoming a prostitute, she disgraces her father. She must be burned in the fire. The high priest, the one among his brothers who has had the anointing oil poured on his head, and who has been ordained to wear the priestly garments, must not let his hair become unkept, or tear his clothes. He must not enter a place where there is a dead body. He must not make himself unclean, even for his father or mother, nor leave the sanctuary of his God, or desecrate it, because he has been de dedicated by the anointing oil of the, his God. I am the Lord. The women he marries, the woman he marries, must be a virgin. He must not marry a widow, a divorced woman, or a woman defiled by prostitution, but only a virgin from his own people, so that he will not defile his offspring among his people. I am the Lord who makes him holy. The Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron for the generations to come, not of your descendants who has none of your descendants who has a defect may come near to offer the food of his God. No man who has any defect may come near. No man who is blind or lame, disfigured or deformed. No man who with a cripple foot or hand, or who is a hunchback or a dwarf or who has any eye defect, or who has fastening, festering, or running sores, or damaged testicles. No descendant of Aaron, the priest, who has any defect, is to come near to present the food offering to the Lord. He has a defect. He must not come near to offer the food of his God. He may eat most holy food, come near to offer the food. He may eat most holy food of his God as well as the holy food. Yet, because of his defect, he must not go near the curtain or approach the altar and so desecrate my sanctuary. I am the Lord who makes them holy. So Moses told this to Aaron 
and his sons, and to all the Israelites. Leviticus 22 The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons to treat with respect the sacred offerings the Israelites consecrate to me, so that they will not profane my holy name. I am the Lord. Say to them, for the generations to come, if any of you or your descendants is ceremonially unclean and yet comes near the sacred offerings that the Israelites consecrate to the Lord, that person must be cut off from my presence. I am the Lord. If a descendant of Aaron has defiling skin diseases or a bodily discharge, he may not eat the sacred offering until he is cleansed. He will also be unclean if he touches something defiled by a corpse or by anyone who has an emission of semen, or if he touches any crawling thing that makes him unclean, or any person who makes him unclean, whatever the uncleanliness may be. The one who touched, touches any such thing will be unclean till evening, and he must not eat any of the sacred offerings unless he has bathed himself with water. When the sun goes down, he will be clean, and after that he may eat the sacred offering, for they are his food. He must not eat anything found dead or torn by wild animals, and so become unclean through, through it. I am the Lord. The priests are to perform my services in such a way that they do not become guilty and die for treating it with contempt. I am the Lord who makes them holy. Now, one outside a priest, no, no one outside a priest's family may eat the sacred offering, nor may the guests of a priest or his wife worker eat it, his hired worker. Sorry, folks eyes are a little messed up today. No one outside a priest's family may eat the sacred offering, nor may a guest of a priest or his hired worker eat it. But if a priest buys a slave with money, or if slaves are born in his household, they may eat his food. If a priest's daughter marries anyone other than a priest, she may not eat any of the sacred contributions. But if a priest's daughter becomes a widow or is divorced, yet has no children, and she returns to live in her father's household as in her youth, she may eat her father's food. No unauthorized persons, however, may eat it. Anyone who eats a sacred offering by mistake must make restitution to the priest for the offering and add a fifth of the value to it. The priest must not desecrate the sacred offerings and the Israelites present to the Lord by allowing them to eat the sacred offering and so bringing upon them guilt requiring payment. I am the Lord who makes them holy. Unacceptable sac sacrifices. 22, Leviticus 22:17. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to Aaron and his sons and to all the Israelites and say to them, If any of you, whether an Israelite or a foreigner residing in Israel, presents a gift for a burnt offering to the Lord, either of full fulfill either to fulfill a vow or as a free will offering you will present a male without defect from the cattle sheep or goats in order that it may be accepted on your behalf do not bring anything with a defect because it will not be accepted on your behalf when anyone brings from the herd or flock 
a fellowship offering to the Lord to fulfill a special vow, or as a free will offering, it must be without defect or blemish to be acceptable. Do not offer to the Lord the blind, the injured, or the maimed, or anything with warts or festering or running sores. Do not place any of these on the altar as a food offering presented to the Lord. You may, however, present as a free will offering an ox or a sheep that is deformed or stunted, but it will not be accepted in fulfillment of a vowel. You must not offer to the Lord an animal whose testicles are bruised, crushed, torn, or cut. You must not do this in your own land, and you must not accept such animals from the hand of a foreigner and offer them as a food to your God. They will not be accepted on your behalf because they are deformed and have defects. The Lord said to Moses, When a calf, a lamb, or a goat is born, it is to remain with its mother for seven days. From the eighth day on, it will be acceptable as food offering presented to the Lord. Do not slaughter a cow or a sheep and its young on the same day. When you sacrifice a thank offering to the Lord, sacrifice it in such a way that it will be acceptable on your behalf. It must be eaten that same day. Leave none of it till morning. I am the Lord. Keep my commands and follow them. I am the Lord. Do not profane my holy name, for I must be acknowledged as holy by the Israelites. I am the Lord who made you holy and who brought you out of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord. Matthew 28, moving on to Matthew 28. Jesus has risen. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord had come down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His presence was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then... Go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead, and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to the Galilee. There they will see me. The guards report. Matthew 11 While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and the a, devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, You are to say his disciples came during the night and stole him away while, he, while we were sleeping. If this report gets to the governor, we will, test, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. The Great Commission. 
Matthew 16. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always, to the very end of age. And that would be Leviticus 21 and 22 and Matthew 28. Thank you, Father, that this was a gift to you and that it was a blessing for you and for those who have tuned in. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen.